Isaiah chapter 54. 1 Timothy is the 54th book of the Bible. <coughs> Excuse me, how is he? Again, we're looking at the nation of Israel. The main theme of the Bible is a kingdom. Not about salvation. About a kingdom them a kingdom that will be given to the Lord Jesus Christ. That kingdom is a Jewish kingdom with David's throne of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I heard another well known preacher say it the other day, and I say it all the time. Too many Christians want to put America in the Bible and America is not in the Bible. Sing, O Baron. That was Sarah. That was Rebecca. That was Rachel. But we're looking at the nation of Israel coming into the millennium. Thou didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud. You know, it's one, people, one thing people hate about me at the farmer's market. Oh, you're too loud. You know all the places the Bible says cry aloud? I feel a sneeze coming. Thou does not travail with child. Now, not travail. Yeah, you know, a woman who, who's barren who hasn't had a child, she doesn't go into the labor of the of giving birth to the baby. But that travail is a reference also to the tribulation period. And more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Now there's coming a time in the millennium that the nation of Israel is going to populate. And they're going to populate with no curse under the love and care of their husband, father, Jehovah. Who has given them a new heart, who has forgiven their iniquities and doesn't remember their sins, and Jesus Christ sitting on the throne as the King of the King and the Lord of Lords of the nation. And with the curse removed, you realize a woman in the millennium like Eve would give birth before the fall, which she didn't give birth before, but there was that opportunity to give birth to children with no pain and no sorrow. That came after the fall. Figure a woman would get would, would have a baby for nine months. You figure maybe you know a couple months, according to the law. Revelation chapter twelve, that woman was unclean for a period of time. Under the law, one for a male child, one for a female child. You figure after she became unclean, after she went to the temple and brought her sacrifice, her sin sacrifice, under the law. The law is in the millennium. And then she would be able to be with her husband. She'd be clean and another pregnancy. Figure one baby a year, maybe twins, maybe trips. I mean, there's twins in the Bible of Israel. Imagine after a thousand years, let's say twins in single birth, one every year. For a thousand years. And then them children having children. Every baby a year. For a thousand years. And then their children having children. Every year. For a thousand years. What do you think the population is going to be. Of the nation of Israel. When we come to the end. Of the thousand years of the millennium. Enlarge the place of thy tent, and the tent is where they dwell. That was their living place. And you find that throughout the Old Testament. And the tent was their home, it's a nomadic place, and they had houses, and they had buildings, and they had. But from the beginning, before they were in the land, they dwelt from tent to tent. You see the wilderness journey, and everyone stood at the door of their tent. And Abraham stood at the door of the tent, and the three angels, one of them being God, came. But the illustration here is tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. So here's a tent. 
And God's telling the nation of Israel, get some more cloth. Why? Because you're going to extend that tent. That tent is going to be broadened. It's going to be bigger. And isn't it interesting that Paul, Aquilius, and Priscilla were all tent makers? Ooh. Interesting. Spare not. Get all the materials you need. Spare not. The best. Lengthen their cords, the ropes, the tent ropes. You better get more ropes. Not only get, I'm going to say fabric, but I don't know, tent material. <laughs> you get more ropes. Make your tent bigger. You're going to need more ropes. And strengthen thy stakes, and that's what you put in the ground. Those are those metal pegs or wooden pegs that you would use. You're going to need more of them. And put them in the ground. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand. That's the strength of the right hand. And on the left, both of them. And the sense of direction, you're going to do well on the right hand. And you're going to do good on the left hand. And thy seed, your children, shall inherit the Gentiles. Israel is going to dominate the world in the millennium. And they're going to be in their land brought in by Jesus Christ like Joshua. And they're going to spread themselves out even further and further and further. They're going to be more than Solomon was the only king that had the full realm of the nation of Israel in their land. And there's a place in the law that said, you know, if you do right, if you do well, you obey my commands, you do that. I, I will enlarge your borders. Here it is in the millennium. Right now, Israel's losing borders. Israel's losing land. Because they're sinning against God. So to, to stretch forth your, your curtains of your habitation and, and build forth the tent and get more rope. That's not today. And that's sure not in the tribulation period. Where there's a place prepared for Israel. And make the desolate cities to be inhabited. There'll be cities in the millennium. You know what? Where did the Gentiles go? Well, the goats went to hell. There'll be places on this earth. Oh, this used to be Rome. Well, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to my people. And I'll have a saint who's earned inheritance. And he'll be in charge of that city. But those cities won't be called by the cities they're called today. I don't think you're going to find America in the millennium. <laughs> Fear not. That's a particular expression found throughout the Bible. Fear not. You know what? You know what the you know what they're going to be coming out of the tribulation period. Thou shalt not be ashamed. They'll be ashamed of the tribulation period. Neither, and they're ashamed today in reality. I mean, can you imagine a Gentile, a dead dog, what they think of us, going up to them and telling them about their Messiah? That's a shame to them. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, the younger Israel. What's the younger Israel? The wilderness. The rebellion in Joshua's time. The rebellion in Judges. The rebellion under Samuel, the rebellion under King Saul, the rebellion with Solomon and his sons and the kings, and the rebellion of Ezra and Nehemiah marrying wives they shouldn't have married, and then the rebellion of them during the Roman Empire with Jesus Christ, and the shame that they caused the apostles and the Christians going through the book of Acts, trying to teach them about what the Bible says, about what the Old Testament says, about what the law says about the Messiah and Jesus Christ. And about today, how you're not doing right. You realize today, you know what the shame of the Jew is today? We're under the law. Okay. That's just, I mean, you, your heart's trying to do it. But what's the shame? Three times a year, the law says you're going to go to Jerusalem. Do they? No. A morning and evening service is to be sacrificed. A lamb every morning. Is that? No. 
How can a Jewish person read the Torah today, 2021, and then realize it's not happening no more because there's no temple? There's no, they don't even know who the, their priests are, never mind the high priest, the genealogy. They don't know who they are. That's a shame. Walk up to a Jewish person. Oh, oh you, you, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yeah. Okay. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Yeah. Which tribe? Oh. They go from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Actually, they go from Abraham right to Moses. <laughs> well, Moses was of Levi. And shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Now, we're going to see in a moment, widowhood. God will put Israel away. We, we read about that earlier in chapter 50, verse 1. Now, God said, where's the divorce paper? Now, God has not divorced the nation of Israel, as some churches will teach. Some religions, God's all finished with it. No, he didn't divorce them. He's done what Paul says. There's a separation. You know what? We're not doing right as a married couple. You go live in your own facilities. I'll take care of you. And when you really want to get right and want to do right, we'll talk. We'll get back. No divorce. But we'll see something like that in Hosea. Lord, when we get to that? Hopefully by then the Lord will come by us. Widowhood. Isn't that a particular expression? Do you know a bunch of women in the Bible? Of course, you read and study your Bible, don't you? Where there are wives who are not dead, who are in widowhood? Were not the concubines of David when they left? When David left, he left those concubines there, and Absalom, a type of Antichrist, had sexual relations with them? And then when David finally came back after the death of Absalom, he put those women in widowhood. They're alive. So don't tell me that a concubine, well, you know, she's a concubine. No, she's a wife. David put them in widowhood. They're my wives. And you'll find particular expressions dealing with concubines in the Bible. They're a wife. So you can be a widow and be alive. And there's a separation between God and his bride, not a divorce. Of the nation of Israel and God. For thy maker, capital M, is thy husband. See that? <coughs> now who is that? That's God. That's God. God says to Israel, I'm your husband. Now there are people who say that God's all finished with Israel, okay? You realize that statement, what it says, but we just read. I'm your Israel, yes, I'm your husband. Churches and religious say, God's all finished. Them. What kind of husband is God then? Is God so righteous and holy that, okay, you're my bride, I love you. Okay, goodbye, I'm going somewhere else. That's not God. And then that goes forth with the eternal security. Eternal security of the nation of Israel. Corporate. So not right now in the church age today, because right now they're separated from God. Corporate. I'm not talking about individual Jews. As a corporate, God's like, okay, you, you live and do what you want to do. We're still married. But I ain't finished with you. That wouldn't be a marriage. Paul said, if thou bound to a wife, seek not to be loose. God would, would violate the scriptures of Paul in 1 Corinthians 7, I believe it is. If God said, you're my wife, well, I'm all done with you. Now, Israel can get a divorce by God because they committed Jesus said, a grounds for a divorce is adultery. Israel is involved with all the paganism. Israel, we're going to read Jeremiah, the queen of heaven. 
You realize the church today, though pastors don't want to believe it and Christians don't want to believe it, you realize the church has committed adultery against God? What I call, and people, some people don't like, the Baptist Catholic Church today. And I've shown you pictures on my Facebook. I, we got a picture of a Baptist church. We celebrate Good Friday. We got Baptist churches that celebrate Christmas and Easter. Those are Catholic. Don't tell me I grew up 17 years a Roman Polish Catholic. I know what I'm talking about. I grew up with an aunt that had Jesus and his heart sticking out on her entire wall and the Catholic candy and the Catholic incense and you go burn your Catholic candle. The only thing she did do was go to church all the time. Typical Catholic. The church is in the same state of Israel and Judah and Isaiah Jeremiah. they got all kinds of gods and gods and they're saying, we're good. God loves us. Along comes in Isaiah and Jeremiah. You're wrong. You're wrong. Well, who do you think you are? You know? Thy Redeemer. Who's the Redeemer? Capital R. That's God. Who redeemed Jesus Christ by the blood of God? That's Jesus Christ there. And God. The Holy One of Israel. If your God's not of Israel, you don't have the God of the Bible. You don't have the God Almighty. I got American God. Ain't good enough. I got a Mecca God. Nope. I got an Italian God. Nope. My God is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and 12 tribes. Bingo. You got it. Here it goes. The God of the whole earth. Oh, look at not only Israel, but the God of the whole earth. Shall be called. For the Lord has called thee as a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth. When thou was refused, saith the Lord thy God. <coughs> Forsaken why? Her fault. She's the one who told her husband, I don't, I don't really love you no more. I love these gods. Again, that's what the church is doing today. Like Israel did. They got the 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 great the, the groves and Jehovah. The church has got their pagan religions, their Catholicism, and Jesus. They have not learned. And the biggest thing I, I get from Christians, well, I don't read the Old Testament. Well, that's why you're in the sin you're doing. And it's fine to see these churches, they actually go through the book of the Old Testament, I mean, they do it quickly. And they don't see nothing. I've had three pastors tell me absolutely Jeremiah chapter 10 is not the Christmas tree. We had one church. We went to Jeremiah 9, right to Jeremiah 11. Verse 7 and 8 is the tribulation period. You know, they say, this came to my head. The Old Testament looks forward to Calvary. Okay? How come they never say that Israel looks forward to Jacob's trouble? They look forward to Calvary and Jacob's troubles. Why don't they look forward to the tribulation period? Because they don't know. Tell the Jewish man that Moses and Elijah is coming back. For a small moment, that's the church age. That's a small moment. <laughs> Wait a minute. Behold, I come quickly. <laughs> you know how long the church, the church has been about 33 AD, thereabouts, plus or minus. It's 2021. That's a small moment, and it, it, it's, the church age hasn't ended yet. God 
is patient. He's long suffering. He's in no hurry. I've forsaken thee. God said, okay, I'm going to whip your butt. I'm going to use the devil. You want the devil and you want all his religion, you want it, I'll give it to you. But there's one thing worse about God is he will give you one. Why are there so many religions? Because that's what you want. Why does this Baptist church teach wrong? That's what you want. Eve wanted that fruit. Did God stop her? Yes. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The day thou shalt eat, thou shalt die. Surely die. That's. There are people that go to hell. How does God stop them? Go out there and preach the gospel. But. With great mercies will I gather thee, second advent. Tribulation coming in the second advent. Do you see? Look, 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 look. See that semi seal semicolon? There's a period on top of a, of a comma. You see that? That semicolon is seven years. Tribulation period is seven years, then the then the second coming and the millennium. That's seven years. That's a seven-year colon. Semicolon. You know, a lot of the pregnancies in the Bible, they're a period, comma, or semicolon. And she and she conceived. And then when she gave birth to her uh, uh, Lord, what about, you know, the pickle cravings? What about the throwing up? What about the big stomach? What about the swollen ankles? What? Lord, what about all the... Right there, semicolon. In a little wrath. <laughs> Did you get that? Have you read the book of Revelation? There's a period of time that there, there's these, these beasts that have scorpion tail. They're going to strike men. I think it's five months. They're going to seek death. And there's going to be no death. The water is going to turn to blood. The sea life is going to be killed. The, the marine life is going to be destroyed. There is this blisters and soreness from the sun scorching them. There is just these angels running rampant. It, the last three and a half years is called the Great Tribulation. Jesus says such a time that no one in the earth has ever seen except for the elect's sake that the time is short. The time will be short and a little rap. What is the full wrath of God? John the Baptist says, he that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. The ultimate wrath of God is hell than the lake of fire. Compared to that, the tribulation period, the great tribulation period, is a little wrath. The tribulation period is seven years. Hell and the lake of fire for all eternity. That's a bold statement. I hid my face from thee for a moment. Now, does it say God abandoned him? Does he not send Moses and Elijah? Does he not send 144,000? Does he not mark the 144,000? He doesn't abandon Israel. And then the Bible says he has a place prepared for them. Israel's not a band. It's like, I'm going to spank your bottom. Bend over, pull your pants down. But with ever, and notice how he says a moment. There's that moment. <laughs> but with everlasting kindness, well, I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. There is mercy in the tribulation period to the Jew, not to the Gentiles. The only mercy is shown to the Gentiles at the, at the second advent. Any Gentiles that helped, took fed, clothed, visited, and gave medical attention to the Jew. All other Gentiles go into hell. I don't care if you're American in the tribulation period. If you didn't help that Jew, go jump in the lake. For this 
is as the waters of Noah to me. That was judgment. That was the wrath of God. For as I've sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. God told Noah, no more is there, will there ever be a vent of a worldwide flood. Now there'll be little floods and big floods, but never a worldwide flood. So have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. God said, when the tribulation period is done with Israel, there'll be nothing more like it again. For the mountain shall depart, second advent. <coughs> and the hills be, and oh, this might be Mother Earth being disappeared. The hills be removed, but my countenance shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed. Now, verse 10 could be the millennium, the second advent, or it could be actually when, when the millennium is over and the heavens and earth flee. And if it's a heaven and earth flee, hey, the earth is going to go away. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That's a promise by God. Jesus is God. And there's another promise. After the heavens and earth are gone, I will never afflict the nation of Israel as such as I afflicted with the tribulation period. Now, why is that not taught in churches? Why is not the eternal security taught of the nation of Israel? Because we're too thinking, thinking about ourselves. How great our church is. How great our pastor is. How great of a Christian I am. O thou afflicted, Israel. Israel. Israel afflicted. Tribulation. Tossed with tempests. Tribulation. And also the entire life of the Jews. And not conform. Behold. I will lay thy stones, fair colors, and these will be gems, and lay the foundations with sapphires. It's almost like New Jerusalem. I will make thy windows agates, it's a stone. Thy gates a carbuncle, it's a stone. And all thy borders a pleasant stone. Gems and beauty, and you see that in Ezekiel. You see it in New Jerusalem. You see it upon the breastplate of the high priest. You did see it in the fallen cherubim called Lucifer. Ezekiel 28, I believe. All thy children, millennium, shall be taught of the Lord. Can you imagine that? Now, where'd you see that before? That's Jesus Christ in the temple. Suffer the little children come unto me. Did it, does it not say in the Bible that at the treasury Jesus taught the people? In the millennium. I don't know if he's going to be on the throne. Or I don't know if he's going to be at the temple again. But he's going to be there teaching. Can you imagine a Baptist? I know I pick it up because they're, they're, they're sinning. Oh, we got a great church. We got a great pastor. What greater pastor, what greater church is that Jesus sit down, whether it be in a temple or on his throne, we're all gathered around him, and he's teaching us. What's he going to teach us? John said, man, we have not even written the tip of the iceberg of all that Jesus done. Imagine Jesus gives us the entire gospel and the entire lesson of all eternity. Imagine we get a time, and there's no time in the month. Imagine comes up to one. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, saints of God, nation of Israel, Gentiles, if you come around the, the river of life, the Apostle Paul will tell us other things that happened that he didn't write. Okay? Now, Apostle Paul has his, there's no time. All right, all you pastors that come up and all you teachers of the Bible that you have been failed on, that you taught wrong, and that you taught paganism, and, and you thought it was okay, Brother Stiley will get up and teach you guys what you were wrong. While he wears his crowns, and you don't have crowns.
Let's have a testimony in heaven. Those that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, from people who planted the seed and watered the seed, when you step up and get, ah, yes, you know, there was this guy that was just screaming at, at the farmer's market, and, and, and I hated him. But you know, one day God just dwelt in my heart and just told me, you know what? I'm not offended at him. I'm, I was offended at the Bible and the Word of God. You know what? I, I, I knelt down and I received Christ as my Savior. I want to thank you for, for preaching. I want to thank you for the gospel track you left in the toilet. I want to thank you for knocking on my door. I want to thank you for opening the Bible with me. I want to thank you for, the, for that, that, that sampler you had at your work desk. Whatever how it is. Now, we're going to have another testimony time. Uh, uh, everybody who just said a prayer is in heaven... Speak up. And the heavenly crickets are going, chirp, chirp, chirp. because when you said a prayer and you didn't mean the prayer, you didn't believe, you're not going to be in heaven. And all the Christians that thought, just say this prayer, are going to bow their head with no crown and defeat. As they saw those souls in the lake of at the great white stone judgment, get cast in the lake of fire forever, and they point their finger. You told me to say a prayer. I know one man. The pastor prayed for me. This is the millennium taught of the Lord. That's Jesus Christ. And great shall be the peace of thy children. There's no peace in Jerusalem, Israel today, right now. They've been launching missiles. They're having crop failures. There's no crop failures in the millennium. In righteousness. Now that's not in Israel today. Shalt thou be established. What's the righteousness? That righteousness is always Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be far from oppression. Once Jesus Christ comes back, that Jew will never be oppressed again. How do you say God's all finished with them? He said, what about the eternal life? Are, are there going to be people that are going to hate the Jews? No. There'll be Christians, there'll be Gentiles, and there'll be Jews, and no one's going to oppress that Jew ever again. That's the eternal security. That's not taught in the churches. Israel, as a corporate body, once the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ comes, has a corporate, under the blood of Jesus Christ, not the blood of bulls, rams, and goats, and all the Old Testament saints that did the best they could, according to the law, and that were redeemed when Jesus Christ died on the cross, the graves were opened, the Old Testament saints rose, the Old Testament saints that didn't rise, that will rise in righteousness, they have an eternal security forever. No one's going to pick on them. No one's going to assault them. No one's going to steal their new land. For thou shalt not fear. You want to go ask a Jew over Israel today if they fear? And from terror. You mean terrorists? They're not afraid of terrorists over there today? The same groups that the United Nations and America and all them support? You mean the Catholics, Ishmael, the Arabians, the Middle Eastern terrorists? They won't be there in the millennium. They won't be there in eternal life. For it shall not come near the, look at that promise by God, eternal peace given to the nation of Israel. So what did Paul say? The words are two, I'm not quoting it. Pray for the peace in Jerusalem. What is that peace? When Jesus Christ comes, and that peace will be for every turn. You, you got one moment that there'll be there'll be a terrorizing. Satan will be loose for a moment from his prison. He's going to gather a bunch of armies. And God's going to say, "Like boat, <laughs> fire." Give 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 God. I mean, give Satan a Thor. Behold, they shall surely gather together, United Nations, but not by me. God didn't call the United Nations Assembly. 
whosoever shall gather together against thee, Israel, shall fall for thy sin. I'll curse them that curse you. There it is. Behold, I, God, hath created the smith, blacksmith, that bloweth the coals of fire, makes the fire hotter, that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, a hammer, tongs, and I have created the waster to destroy. That waster would be the devil. The devil's going to defeat and conquer his own nation. Because the nations belong to the devil, because the devil said to Jesus, hey, all these nations I'll give you fall down and worship me. And again, there was no rebuke by Jesus. Like Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Well, wait a minute, Thomas. You're, no, there was no rebuke. There are th three powers that put people into authority of nations today. God, the devil, and man. And when you got corrupt, lying, screwed up, Republican and Democrat government, I don't think that is an author of God. Now, if God has part in it, he does because he gives permission to the devil. It's because for the people's own destruction, because that's what they want. Listen, God will give a nation the leader they deserve. I don't like Biden. Well, Biden is what God says. That's what you deserve. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. That ain't today. Those missiles. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. That ain't today. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord Israel, and the righteousness is with, excuse me, is of me. That's Jesus. Saith the Lord. You better pray for Israel. You better leave Israel alone. You better not have any Jewish jokes. You better not have even a hatred to a, to a Jewish person. And believe me, they can get you mad. I've dealt with with Jewish Christians. And I, you know, Lord God, I'm sorry. That guy just got me. You better watch what you say. You better watch everything about that Jew. And you better pray for that Jew.